What's up guys, this is going to be a really quick video. I'm just going to be briefly talking about basically my thoughts on why I think the vast majority of look ahead videos you're going to find aren't really going to be helpful and are just kind of BS. And also like on top of that, like why I guess the community wide understanding and general, I guess opinions of people about how to improve look ahead are generally BS as well. So firstly, what I almost always see in look ahead advice videos slash, you know, Cube is helping each other in either CF or the SS forums. It's usually something to the effect of, you know, just do slow solving or just do metronome practice or even turbo tracking was a thing. Basically anything to the effect of like slower turning and trying to just do it. Like just do it basically. Like just try and, you know, go at a speed that will allow you to do it. The reason I really don't like this advice and I think it's kind of BS is because it's really not explaining what look ahead is. And I think a lot of, especially like up and coming, like younger cubers who are just getting into it really don't know what, what looking ahead actually means, like an actual definition. And on top of that, like this is just anecdotally speaking, obviously, but you know, I, I know a m number of fast cubers myself, you know, being one, obviously, but I know like very, very confidently that pretty much no one has improved a significant amount from metronome practice or the whole slow solving thing. Like, yeah, people do it and maybe it is like a little bit helpful, but I think people really overblow like how helpful it is for improving your F2L look ahead and I think there are much better ways to improve your look ahead. I also think look ahead isn't really a problem in of itself. When you see someone with poor look ahead, it doesn't mean they just need to be doing slower solves or looking ahead more. Well, you know, just trying to do it, you know, is basically the advice. Usually when someone has poor look ahead, it's just a symptom of other problems in their solves. So that's more or less why I think the general advice on look ahead slash like 99% of look ahead videos are BS. But with that said, I should explain what I actually think is the solution to poor look ahead or at least some solutions. There's obviously no like one size fits all thing. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch over to, actually I can just do this now. Da -da. And let's flip this over so I can see. Yeah, so here we have a cube. X cross is done, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just mark up the pairs a bit. Whatever. Might as well zoom in a bit too. Okay, so I've explained what I see in terms of, you know, being the general consensus on what people think look ahead is in the Cuban community, and I disagree with it. So people are probably thinking, Jay, what do you think, you know, is the answer? What's look ahead then? So poor look ahead, in my opinion, like, 99.9% .9 of the time it's a symptom of something else. It usually comes down to one of three categories. The least likely one is poor rotation choices slash unintelligent rotating. And what I mean by that is let's say you have, um, uh, we'll, we'll just go with this pair. Let's say you have this pair here from this angle and you know how to pair it up. And you know, you know, you know what you're doing basically. But for whatever reason, the way you solve it is you do that to pair it up, and then you rotate to the front and insert it in the front. Generally speaking with F2L, and just so you guys know, I'm going to be talking about look ahead in the context of CFOP, but if you change the jargon around, it really should apply to things like ZZ, CFOP, Petrus, whatever you want to use. But that aside, by solving it in the front, you're really limiting where you can actually find pieces to begin with, as opposed to, say... If you insert it in the back, like this is really not in your plane of view. So for C flop solver specifically, if you're a right hand dominant solver especially, my, I guess, prioritization of F12 slots is usually filling up the back left will always be the best because you're right hand dominant and it's in the back. And then back right and the front left slots, they're kind of similar in terms of usefulness. The main benefit from filling up the back right instead of the left front is that it's a slot in the back. And then the benefit of filling up the left front is that it is a slot in the front, but you can very easily still see pieces. And it is nice to, especially filling up the left two slots can be really good because then you can maybe have a two gen finish or at least just have everything on the right. Basically the operative point is here is like, if you're a right hand dominant solver, you don't really solve like with tunnel vision. You're kind of more like this, if that makes sense. So poor rotation choices can sometimes be the reason you're not having the best look ahead but usually you're also having problems in one of the other two areas. So one other area, and again, this isn't like the main culprit, I'll get the main culprit at the end because I like to make people 
watch my videos for a long time, is poor understanding of how pieces move when you solve a pair. So let's say you see these two pieces, you know how to solve them, and you can confidently do it like with your eyes closed, like seeing these pieces and just being like, okay, I don't know what to do isn't the problem. What the problem is, is you don't really know how pieces are going to be affected. So like, even though you may see this pair, like I see, I know exactly how these are going to split up after solving this. It'll just kind of be like that. But you may not necessarily know that. And even if you see it, you just kind of, you know, you go into it, blah, blah, blah. And you'd like, oh, what? oh, okay, this is here. And then go into that as opposed to having that like added layer of knowledge of how pieces move when you're solving pairs. But again, that's not usually the main culprit. Usually when someone has poor look head, most of the time it is a symptom of just not knowing how to do your solutions confidently. And there's a few levels to this. So the first level is like, you know, you've just learned CFOP, you've just learned intuitive F2L. And uh, I mean, we won't use, let's just mess up our pairs again a bit. I don't know, that'll do. Let's say you have this pair. And you just learn intuitive F2L, well, you know, like, ways of pairing pieces up, but you don't know, like, all the optimal setups, or... You, yeah, basically just all the optimal setups. So you're like, oh, these two, uh, split them up, uh, uh, get the edge over. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Yep, that's how you pair them, and then you insert, and you're just spending so much, of you, so much of your mental resources looking at that pair as you do them. As you do the two pieces, I should say. And the problem with that is if you have to spend mental resources and actively look at the pair you're solving, that's effectively the opposite of look ahead. So if you want a concrete definition of look ahead, here's what I would say. Looking ahead is seeing two pieces, knowing how to solve them. This is in the context of F2L again. Sorry, rear users. Um, so you see two pieces, you know how to solve them. And because you know how to solve them, you don't have to look at them. So you look around for other pieces while you solve them. So you're just kind of doing the moves through muscle memory. But your mental resources aren't really dedicated to solving that pair. It's kind of your hands have a brain of their own. And what you're looking for is just the next step and just seeing, you know, obviously once you're at a higher level, you kind of know where things are going to be, but at a lower level, it's not really look ahead. It's more like looking around as you solve pieces. So that's how I would define look ahead. It's looking for the step that you're not currently solving. You are looking ahead. And at the lowest level, it looks like what I just showed you, which is, you know, you don't really know how to solve the pieces. And then at a more higher level, let's take, say, um, uh, what's a good example? Okay, let's take, let's take this pair. This is kind of an advanced-ish case. Um, and the way it works is you can solve it like that. And maybe you know those moves really well. You can see that. And you're confident your muscle memory is there. However, you're not so confident that you can literally close your eyes and then solve the pair and then open them and be confident that you haven't messed up. So that's the level of confidence you need to really max out your look ahead in my opinion. And I think that's what people need to work towards if they want the best look ahead they can possibly get. So if you're not confident enough to like do this pair blindfolded, that means you're going to spend some number of mental resources, maybe not as many as the previous nub example, but you have to use some mental resources to look at the cube and make sure you haven't messed up. And those mental resources you're, look, you're using for this pair are mental resources you could have been using to just look ahead and see these two pairs. And then again, say you have a pair like this. You're confident you know how to solve it. You, know, you more or less solve it at the same time every time you see it. But you're not so confident that you can close your eyes, solve the pair, open them, and then know that the pair will be solved. So in my opinion... If you have poor look ahead, doing slow solves may or may not help a little, but it's not going to really make the world of difference. You can try things like Metro and practice for fun, but in my opinion, it's entirely a gimmick. You can also try the whole trying to solve two F2L pairs blindfolded at the same time. I think that's an okay way to practice look ahead, but it doesn't really get to the issue so much as it's just kind of a fun way to practice. In my opinion, I think the best way to get better at look ahead in the context of F2L is... You learn a way to solve every single standard and a bunch of non-standard F2L cases like with like a really efficient solution that you like. Or just a solution that you like, I should say. It doesn't have to be efficient as long as it's you know speedy and can get you the times you want. And then once you have all those solutions, be so confident and so have them so ingrained in your muscle memory that you can just be like, oh, I see this pair. I know what to do. Da, 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 and then use 
all of your mental resources just to kind of look around as those moves are kind of happening in front of you. And with that, you should iron out, like, the vast majority of your after well problems, or your look-ahead problems, I should say. So, just going to do a really quick recap. Looking ahead, not really a skill in of itself. Having poor look-ahead or good look-ahead is usually a symptom of how well-developed certain skill sets are. In my opinion, those skill sets are having a good understanding of F2L solutions such that you can just see two pieces, no matter where they are in the cube, close your eyes, know that your hands are going to figure it out, and then open your eyes and be confident that they're solved. If you can do that, that means you can spend basically all of your mental resources looking ahead for the next pair, whether this is like looking around or just seeing how pieces move in the top layer, obviously depending on you know, how well the F12 is set up for that particular scramble. So that's mission number one for most people, and then if you're still having look-ahead problems, you may want to look into seeing how certain pieces move. So, say, something like this, you know how to solve it confidently, but you don't really know, like, where this corner's going to go, for instance. Um, that's another thing you can work on if you're still having some look-ahead trouble. Like, here, I just know these aren't going to go anywhere, so I can just go straight into it. And as I'm doing that, I see this, and actually this is another aspect of look ahead. Looking ahead doesn't just mean eliminating pauses. You could technically pause here, and then be like, oh, the smart thing to do here is actually just insert this pair in the back like that, and then cancel into that. Even though you would pause there, or a lot of people would pause there, I think as long as you quote unquote look ahead, because you're not really thinking of that other pair, and you move into the, the more efficient solution, I would say that's good look ahead, even though there is a pause there. So that's another thing, knowing how pieces move. I think a good way to practice that is... Uh, let's just solve the cube. Uh, that was not the pair. Wow, okay. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know, let's take a... Say like this case, you just get a solved cube and then you set up an F12 case. Like that. And then you can pretty much just see in front of you how the pieces will move. Like, so for this F12 case, if you have pairs either here or here, they will preserve. And when I say pairs, I don't mean like just a free pair, like if you have two pieces here that like belong together but aren't necessarily, you know, a pair, you can still kind of track that and make a mental note. You can also see like these edges just kind of cycle around a bit. Um, obviously take note of as much as you can, but if you're still having trouble with look ahead, even though you've mastered F12 to the point that you can, to the point that you can just see two pieces, close your eyes, let the muscle memory do its thing. If you can do that and you're still having problems, that would be the next thing I would look at. And then the last thing I would look at is making sure that you're rotating in an intelligent manner. Which basically just means if you, like, start doing a pair and have to do, like, Y or Y prime to insert, you try to choose the right option. Which for right-handed solvers, you want to prioritize feeling back left. And then probably back right a little more so than front left, simply because having the back filled, I think, is more important for look ahead than having the front, the left slots filled. Although you are kind of solving at this angle, as you can see, you see quite a bit more along here as opposed to here. So that would be the last thing I would work on if you're still having poor F2 or look ahead. So that being said, if you improve those very three things that I just mentioned, I guarantee you will have much better look ahead than you did before. And notice that none of those three tips involve doing slow solves, metronome practice, turbo tracking, any of that crap, any of that BS. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching.